All right, so we've already looked at uh, break-even analysis. We looked at several different methods to determine the amount of sales dollars that we needed to break even uh, or the number of sales units. But as you might guess, most businesses do not merely seek to break even. They want to make a profit. So we can alter our formulas just ever so slightly and we can come up with very, very basic equations to uh, arrive at a targeted net profit. So if we look here, we have this in both words and numbers, but our fixed expenses up here in our numerator are the same as before. And down here in our denominator, we have our unit contribution margin of $200. That was the $500 sales price minus the $300 in variable costs. So now we're adding this $100,000 here. That is our target profit. We've decided, okay, uh, real. now we want to make as much money as possible, but, but when we look at these things uh, as managers, we try to be realistic. And so this, in this scenario, we're going to assume that a $100,000 targeted profit is realistic. We merely add these two figures, the fixed costs and the target profit, divide by our unit contribution margin, and we're able to determine how many surfboards we have to sell. Then we can simply uh, multiply this number by the sales price of $500 per unit. And I believe if we do that, we would come up with $450,000 in sales to make a targeted profit of $100,000. We have the exact same thing here. This is just the equation approach. Uh, and you're more than welcome to use that. Everything about this equation is the exact same as what we looked at previously. It's just that instead of having a big zero here, now we have $100,000. But solving for X, we come up with the exact same uh, 900 surfboards need to be sold to make the $100,000 profit. Again, 400 units to break even, 900 need to be sold to make the desired $100,000 profit. All right, so we've talked about uh, targeted income, and then we we previously talked about the uh, break-even analysis. So if we take the difference between those two, we have what is called the safety margin or the margin of safety, and it's and it's what it says here is true. It says that that is the difference between budgeted sales revenue and break-even sales revenue, or as you have down here at the bottom, it is the difference between budgeted sales units and break-even sales units. So um, if we budget for 900 units based on our desired $100,000 profit, that's wonderful and that's great. But let's say that we don't, um, we don't sell 900 units. We sell some number less than 900 units. Well, we're okay we're still in the money all the way down to through 401 units. After that, as your slide says, or after, after we dip down below 400 units, losses begin to be uh, incurred. So here we have an example. Uh, you've seen this, essentially you've seen this before, but now we're presenting it from the perspective of safety margin. So if we have a break-even point of 200,000 and estimated sales are 250,000, then we could say that the safety margin in dollars is 50,000 and that the safety margin in units is 100. And you can see that right here. If you take 400 from 500, you have 100, and that is our safety margin in units. If you take 200,000 away from 250,000, you come up with the $50,000 uh, safety margin in dollars. Okay, so what if we have a change in fixed cost? Now we, we thought about, on our previous little handout video, we looked at a, a kind of a concept question about what happened if uh, if direct labor costs 
go up, what happens to the break-even point? So now we have a situation dealing with changes in fixed costs. Um, so let's take a look at this and see what we have. It says that this company, Curl, is currently selling 500 surfboards per year. By now, you should have that number memori uh, memorized. It says the owner believes that an increase of $10,000 in the annual advertising budget would increase sales to 540 units. So should the company increase the advertising budget, yes or no? Well, let's, let's look at some math and see about that. All right, so currently um, we have $250,000 in sales that are generating $20,000 budgeted net income. So if we, if we sell an additional 40 units, we add $20,000 to sales. But remember, we also have to increase um, for, for each one of these units, that we sell extra, we're going to incur $300 in variable costs. Well, 40 times 300 is 12,000. So our variable costs have gone from 150 to 162. Now, overall, our contribution margin has gone up by 8,000, but the key is right here. Well, this is one of the keys anyway. Our fixed expenses have gone up by that $10,000 extra that we spent on advertising. So if we look and we only look at the numbers, net income has gone from $20,000 to $18,000. Now that's a 10% decrease in net income. And that is, that is a sizable amount. So from an accounting perspective, the advice would be do not spend the extra $10,000 uh, on advertising. Now I will tell you this. Uh, there is a case to be made for going ahead and doing this, particularly if we could get this number here up a little bit. If we could get this number to say uh, 19.5, something like that, we might decide that, you know what, by capturing a larger portion of the uh, surfboard market, we can still go ahead and do something like this, even if net income goes down a little bit. Now, the problem here is that it's going down by 10%, and that's probably unacceptable. So he's very depressed here um, because his net income decreased by $2,000, and he understands that, you know what, I probably need this extra $2,000 here. If the $2,000 doesn't impress you enough, just keep adding zeros uh, until you are impressed. Okay. So. We had now we did have a, a, a question almost identical to this. It was that same last concept question. Changes in unit contribution margin. And it says here, because of increases in the cost of raw materials, our example dealt with uh, labor, curl's variable cost per unit has increased from three hundred to three hundred and ten dollars with no change in selling price per unit, which is what we discussed on that last question in the previous handout, what will be the new break-even point? Okay, so our sales price is still 500. Our variable cost is now 310, and our fixed costs are the same. So our, again, remember, if you can, um, our previous break-even point was 400 units, but now we have to sell 422 units because our contribution margin per unit has gone down by $10 from $200 to $190. All right. But it can also work the other way. It says, suppose that this company increases the price to $550. That's quite an increase with no change in variable cost per unit. What will be the new break-even point? Well, $550 sales price minus 300, that was our original variable cost per unit, minus the same 80,000 in fixed cost. Now we only have to sell 320 units uh, to break even. I will say this, normally you, it's not an all or nothing thing. If you see a change in, uh, and the sales price goes up, it's probably because some other costs have gone up. Either your variable costs or your uh, fixed costs have gone up. And so 
we pass some of that, if not all of it, uh, on to the consumer. All right, so this, this heading here, predicting profit, given expected volume, uh, this was kind of part of budgeting, and we haven't gotten to budgeting yet, but you can see here, um, given uh, fixed expenses, given a certain unit contribution margin, and given a uh, certain uh, targeted net profit, we can find required sales volume. Conversely, we could use the same fixed expenses and unit contribution margin and substitute expected sales vol volume to find expected profit. Okay, this is what is referred to in budgeting as flexible budgeting, what if scenarios, those types of things. Okay, so again, we are making predictions here. These are estimates of what is going to happen in the future. It says in the coming year, Curl's owner expects to sell 525 surfboards. So let's see here, that's 25 more than what we had before. But it says the, the unit contribution margin is expected to be 190. And fixed costs are expected to have increased to $90,000. So probably one of the reasons why we're selling 25 more units is um, because we've incurred some increases in um, variable costs and we've also incurred some increases in fixed costs and we haven't changed our sales price. So if we take our contribution margin of 190 and we multiply that by 525, the number of units expected to be sold, and then we subtract from that our fixed cost of 90,000, ultimately, without going through every single one of these steps, we're going to come up with 99, we're going to come up with 99,750 here minus the 90,000. And so we're going to have expected profit of 9,700. $50. So here's a case where, um, yeah, so we didn't, we didn't change our sales price, but because we didn't do that, we got some benefit in terms of sales volume. Okay. Profit went down quite a bit, however. All right. So what we've looked at so far uh, are examples of cost volume profit analysis with a single product, but that's not very realistic. Usually there are multiple products, right? So for a company with more than one product, we have to, we have to consider this thing called sales mix. Um, and I'll let you read the rest of this. Um, let's see here. So let's assume Curl is going to sell these same surfboards, and they're also going to sell something called sale boards and see how we deal with break-even analysis given two products instead of one. Okay, so we have some things to consider. The sales uh, price of these items looks like surfboards are half the price of sailboards. Um, we have differences in variable cost per unit and correspondingly we have a difference in unit contribution margin. We also have a difference in actual sales volume. So how do we account for all of this? Well, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, um, what percentage of each of these two products, surfboards and sailboards, uh, in terms of units, do we have to... Um, how do we allocate these in terms of units? Well, we've got 800 total units sold, 500 of which are surfboards, and that's 62.5% of 800. The 300 units is 37.5% of 800. Okay, so 62.5% is going to be our allocation for surfboards, 37.5% for sailboards. Now, this gets interesting. So, what we do if I want to go back real quick, um, look at this unit contribution margin, $200 for the surfboards, $550 for the sailboards. So if we take that unit contribution margin, 200 for the surfboards, and we multiply it by 
62.5%. We come up with a weighted contribution of $125. We do the same thing for sale boards, 550 times the 37.5%. We come up with a weighted contribution of 206.25. We simply add these two numbers together to get 331.25, and that is our weighted um, contribution margin based on sales mix, 331.25, okay? Now, we have some fixed expenses. Looks like things have changed some because we have um, two products now and our fixed expenses are $170,000. We take our weighted average unit contribution margin of 331.25 and if we execute this little equation here, we come up with break-even uh, units of 514 combined sales units okay 514 combined sales units again we are we are basing this on the idea that we're going to sell 500 surfboards at $500 a piece and 300 sailboards at uh, $1000 a piece with their corresponding unit contribution margins okay so if we if we think about that, we say, okay, well, that's what we're expecting to have happen. But what do we, and, and we're going we're gonna to make some profit and so forth, hopefully. Um, but what do we need to do to break even? Well, if we're going to break this down per product, we take that 514 and we say, well, that constitutes 321 surfboards and 193 sale boards again based on these same percentages all right i think that's enough for this video so we will uh, go ahead and get this uploaded and come up with a handout for these questions and we'll do that next